Welcome today to the Lily Meadows channel. Today is July 12, 2023. And our God, the creator of all life, has come to be with us during our time together. And we welcome you, God. We welcome you with all of our heart whenever anyone is listening and to speak your word into your creation through our time together that you will have said what you are trying to say and as your presence comes up around every listener and everyone this word is sent to will receive that which you are delivering. Lord, thank you for your presence. Lord, I pray for healing for everyone listening. Healing and deliverance. When I was a very young Christian, I had a dream. And some dreams are just so from God. And in this dream, the Lord Jesus Christ came on a motorcycle and he came to deliver me from an orphanage. He sat down with the lady and he signed me out. We rode away on motorcycles and I was delivered by God. And in that mighty deliverance, our God said to um, in Isaiah 54 that I have redeemed you and I will deliver you. And so our creator has sent Jesus Christ. He is God who showed us our Father. He came not equal. He did not make himself equal with God, but he came as a servant to show us how to live. In the beginning, Adam and Eve, they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They wanted to know for themselves, be in control for themselves. But through time, God has created within the heart of people, individuals that sought after God, that went for God, these individuals sought him and said to him, You are my God. I will not be able to control my own destiny. I don't want you to bless what I'm doing, but I want to bless what you're doing. And it's a very different existence, but it's the one that mankind was created for, so that when we live in that way, our God then creates within us what he intended for mankind to be. And the reality of that is astounding. And you're experiencing that reality as he fills you from inside. And he comes, from upon, he comes upon you from his place. And he says, I will create within you a habitation for myself. Many, many aspects of creation worship God and obey God. Amen, the stars, the wind, the rains, all the pattern of creation honors God and does what he says. Well, there was a malfunction when God gave free will and certain angels and people decided that they wanted to be their own God. They wanted to do it for themselves. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is that when mankind has decided we will know for ourselves and we'll be the master of our own destiny. And thousand, about 6,000 years later, we see what that wrought in the earth, a great and terrible darkness that came upon the whole earth that tried to be God instead of God. And our creator said, listen, if you will turn toward me, I will be your God and you will be my person. And that's what we were created for. So that's where the ultimate fulfillment will come in. Amen. And as we listen, we can feel the fullness of God, who he is and how he feels towards you. You know, when you're young and you have a crush on someone, right? When they will reciprocate and you find out the day you find out the one you have a crush on also has a crush on you and also desires you and wants to know you and be with you. There is such a fulfillment there. And the Lord feels that way toward his bride. And he expresses that in the Song of Solomon, chapter 5. I came to my garden, my sister, my bride. 
I gathered my myrrh with my spice. I ate my honeycomb with my honey. I drank my wine with my milk. Eat, friends, drink, and be drunk with love. The Lord has prepared a wedding feast, which is a feast of our reciprocation of his feelings toward us. As he looks to you and he says, my beloved, I have created you to be mine. Somehow God can make it feel for all of us as if we were the only one. Because he has a place in him you shaped. And when we come into that place, we become what we were created to do and be. Our creator is ultimately God, the master of all things. And when he wants to bring changes, he will. When he wants to do something, he will. I saw a little boy on his lap in, a, in an experience with God. And I saw God loving this little boy and he was almost, he was crying in this love for this little boy that he had on his lap. And he said, he asked me, he looked at me, Father, and he said, how does change happen on the earth? And I knew, I knew it was from those he loves that ask him because he is ultimately the judge. He's ultimately the decider of all things. And when Israel went astray, they were destroyed by the very gods they worshipped. Because God is a jealous God. And he is the one who decides. And when they turned toward him, he brought life and well-being. And they were able to worship him in spirit and truth and find out why they were created. And for what purpose. Amen. A lot of us float around without a purpose. What is our purpose? To come to his garden. He comes to our garden, we reciprocate, we return the love, and we come to his garden. Just like Ruth, when she went to Boaz's feet, she laid at his feet. And when she did that, she was saying, will you please marry me? Boaz said to her, how great is that kindness that you have showed, you beautiful woman, because you didn't go after other men, whether poor or rich. And he, he felt so grateful that she wanted him. And the Lord is that gentle and that humble at heart. When we love him back, there is a, an exchange where he will make changes on the earth and he will do wonderful, wonderful things. The Son of God was revealed to us through the Father, sent him. And the Father was revealed to us through the Son whom he sent. And the Holy Spirit makes known God. And as we seek him, he comes to our garden and we go to his. And our life is fulfilled in this amazing way where we exist and live in a dimension above our earthly lives. Where we're not trying to make something happen or control a situation. We're helpless before God. And he will take us through many experiences where we can recognize our helplessness. And then he comes to our rescue and helps us. Amen. He is a great God and he comes to our garden and he loves us. And when we reciprocate that love, he is so fulfilled by that. In your individual relationship with him, in your interchange with him, it brings him great pleasure as a child that sits with the king and has cake with the king, and as a bride who is so sought after and so adored and loved by her king. It's amazing how God has created us to fellowship with him from the beginning. And we are restoring that garden. The Garden of Eden is a real place, and we can live there today. By receiving Jesus Christ as our Savior, coming to Him in spirit and truth, honoring who He is, and seeking Him, seeking His yoke on us, which is light. <clears throat> I had a dream last night where the Lord showed me barrels and how we go through many seasons in our lives where there's a lot of pain, a lot of we don't understand 
why certain things happened or didn't happen. And we processed emotionally. And the Lord has kept all of that processing, all of our faith in the measures of our trust in Him. And He's put them into barrels like you do wine. He crushed our grapes. And then we think that's just in the past. That's just gone. But the Lord is saying, I will restore all that was lost to you. I will, I have, I have stored up everything to keep you and to guide you and to bring it back in a time when you can drink the wine of the kingdom because you have gone through the process of becoming mine. Amen. And that is a beautiful process. And it is described in Song of Solomon chapter 5 where the bride says, I slept, but my heart was awake. A sound, my beloved is knocking. Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my perfect one. For my head is wet with dew, my locks with the drops of the night. You see, it's cold out there to the Lord among humanity in many, many ways. And he's seeking a, he's seeking a refuge. When I was um, in my middle Christianity time, I went to a lot of different conferences and I went to one, but I got lost, but I was near the beach in that. And I thought, I'm just going to go to the beach and spend time with the Lord. And when I got there, there was no place. There were really no hotels. They didn't have, when I was at that age, they didn't have Google Maps and they didn't have internet that I could have on. I didn't have a phone, right? So I couldn't find a hotel. I just had to drive around and I did. And it was so dirty, I could barely even sit down there. But at least I was inside somewhere safe. But it wasn't clean. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, that's how I feel about that conference. They're not giving me any room. They're sitting around their round table being the big dog. But they're not giving me my place. And it's dirty. And that was the first time the Lord shared his heart, which is the love song that we sing to him, recognizing his feelings about how welcome he is in places and how I didn't understand at that time how people could could have a whole conference in his name but not welcome him and that he didn't have a place among them to dwell and be comfortable enough to move and to honor them with his presence and he shared his heart with me about that and how that works is he said, I, I will open to me. It's cold out here. I'm, 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 in the, I'm in the elements. I want to come into you and be safe in your heart. I want to find a habitation where I can find cleanliness and safety for myself. Um, and then the bride said to him, well, I've already taken off my, my outer garment. How can I put it on? I mean, it's kind of a lot of work to go and do that. I bathe my feet. If I stand up on the dirt, it's going to make them dirty. But my beloved put his hand to the latch and my heart was thrilled within me. All of a sudden she said, oh, who cares about all that stuff? I'm going to jump up and let him in. I arose to open to my beloved and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with liquid myrrh on the handles of the bolt. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had turned and gone. My soul faded within failed me when he spoke. I sought him, but I found him not. I called him, but he gave no answer. Then she goes about the streets and she gets beaten up, which speaks of religion. Now she's she's experienced God, but she hesitated. We probably have all have done that by the nature of our convenience. You know, we want our, we want, we don't want to be inconvenienced. Amen. But the Lord he, he wants us to go after him. So this bride, she sought him and among religion, and they beat her up. They beat me, they bruised me, they took my veil, those watchmen on the walls. I adjure you, O daughters of Jer Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him, I am sick with love. Like, I, I need him. I don't want your religion, I want God. I'm sick with love. And they're like, well, who is your beloved compared to another beloved? Oh, most beautiful among women, what is your beloved more than any other? And then she describes him. He's radiant and ruddy. He's distinguished among 10,000. His head is the finest gold. 
His locks are wavy, black as a raven. His eyes are like doves beside streams of water, bathed in milk, sitting beside a full pool. She's recognizing the beauty of her beloved Jesus. And she's crying out for him, and so she's going after him. Now she has a tenacity to seek him beyond religion, to seek him beyond mankind. And when she does that, she begins to form a need for him, and he also needs her. And she becomes this habitation for him as he responds to her love, and she responds to his love. And that's how change is going to take place on the earth. Amen? And God today is rebuilding his temple. This is the book of Enoch, chapter 54. Afterwards, the ancient of days repented and said, In vain have I destroyed all the inhabitants of the earth. This was after the flood. And he swore by his great name, saying, Henceforward I will not act thus towards all who dwell upon earth, but I will place a sign in the heavens, and it shall be a faithful witness between me and them forever, as long as the days of heaven and earth last upon the earth. Afterwards, according to this my decree, when I shall be disposed to seize them beforehand, when they provoke me, when they use my rainbow to, to march in their pride parade, when they use my covenant, throw it back in my face and say, the devil said, look how gross these people can be before you and you're not allowed to destroy them. Ha ha ha, right? <laughs> when he was, just, and things like that, when he is disposed to seize them before, Seize them beforehand. Like, I can't take these people anymore. By the instrumentality of angels in the day of affliction and trouble, he won't do it because he said, I won't destroy the whole earth again. My wrath and my punishment shall remain upon them. My punishment and my wrath, saith God, the Lord of spirits. O ye kings, O ye mighty, who inhabit the world, you shall behold my elect one, Jesus Christ, sitting on the throne of my glory. And he shall judge Azaziel and all his associates and all his hosts in the name of the Lord of Spirits. There, likewise, I beheld hosts of angels who were moving in punishment, confined in a network of iron and brass. There is justice. Have you seen commercials of this horrible darkness that they are projecting into mankind right now? The darkness, mankind and the angels? Well, there are... Um, they're going to be moving in punishment in a network of iron and brass bound to do any more darkness. How does this occur? Well, those who seek the Lord from the beginning of time have brought about him finding a place with us. And when he finds a place with us, he is justified in moving on our behalf. So these angels definitely seek the children of God to destroy them, but they themselves will be destroyed. Then I inquired of the angel of peace who proceeded with me, to whom those under confinement were going. He said, To each of their elect, their beloved, that they may be cast into the fountains and deep recesses of the valley. And that valley shall be filled with their elect and beloved, the days of whose life shall be consumed, but the days of their error shall be innumerable. Thank you, Lord, for what you're trying to say. We seek you for a deeper understanding of what this means. You see, before the flood and for the reason for the flood, angels went into mankind and produced giants. These giants were half angel and half human. That means that they don't die. Half of them doesn't die and half of them in their bodies dies, right? It's different than humans. This was against the will of God and dis caused destruction on the earth. These giants were great, horrible bullies, and they killed and destroyed all over the earth. And there had to be a flood to destroy this, or God can't, he couldn't abide it anymore. It was so bad. The people's blood was crying out, the innocent, because these giants were taking all their stuff and then killing them when they ran out. These giants ate a lot. They were gross and disgusting and powerful. And the people were crying out. And so he had to bring a flood. When he brought the flood, um, the angels who transgressed among men, most of them were bound at that time in eternal punishment. Some were left, I think, from what I understand, some were left um, to bring judgment upon the earth when people displeased God. I, from my understanding, 
Well, these um, giants died in the flood, but part of them didn't die, right? The angel part of them, and they became the demons. Okay, and so the days of their life were consumed as the giants themselves, but the days of their error shall be innumerable. These angels, they introduced to mankind death, they introduced abortion, they introduced witchcraft, and um, the dividing of roots, like trying to control like um, crop, when you alter crops and different things like that. So they taught them all these things in writing so that they could continue to perpetuate their darkness. So they left, and their error is innumerable. The days of their error, which is still happening today. But there comes a time when all that is dark that displeased God is washed away and gone from his presence and cast into the lake of fire, which is the great abyss. That place is firmly settled forever, and they will suffer forever and ever, those who dishonor the Lord. Then princes combine together and conspire. The chiefs of the east among Parthians and Medes shall remove kings, in whom a spirit of perturbation shall enter. They shall hurl them from their thrones, springing as lions from their dens, and like famished wolves into the midst of the flock. They shall go up and tread upon the land of their elect. The land of their elect shall be before them, the threshing floor, the path, and the city of my righteous people shall impede the progress of their horses. So we are in a spiritual battle. I'm not surprising anyone by saying that. There is a spiritual battle right now. They shall rise up to destroy each other. The right hand shall be strengthened, nor shall a man acknowledge his friend or his brother. These dark forces destroy each other nor the son, his father, and his mother, until the number of the dead bodies shall be completed by their death and punishment. Neither shall this take place without cause. In those days shall the mouth of hell be opened, into which they shall be emerged. Hell shall destroy and swallow up sinners from the face of the elect. Now we, as God's people, impede the progress of darkness by worshiping God, by giving God a place in our existence, by pleasing God and praying to him, repenting of our sin and the sin of those around us, that God might be merciful and visit the earth with his goodness. And the Lord is doing that. His mercy is forever. And in this day, the Lord has marked those written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And they are innumerable and they will worship God forever. They may not know it now, but they're marked and protected by angels. While the mouth of hell is opened and these darknesses some remained from the flood the demons that were in the giants still remained and obviously you can see them on the television you just have to flip a little bit and you can even see them they're not even hiding anymore um, their manifestation is there in horror movies and all of that stuff and there were still some of those angels that were left behind that chose darkness after this, I beheld ar another army of chariots with men riding in them, and they came upon the wind from the east, from the west, and from the south. The sound of the noise of their chariots was heard, and when that agitation took place, the saints out of heaven perceived it. The pillar of the earth shook from its foundation, and the sound was heard from the extremities of the earth unto the extremities of heaven at the same time. Then they all fell down and worshipped the Lord of Spirits, God Almighty. This is the end of the second parable. <clears throat> I now begin to utter the third parable concerning the saints and the elect. There will be judgment for the dark forces. There will be. When will God, our creator, who we honor and welcome in our midst, because we're a habitation for him, you see? We're a habitation for him, and he finds great pleasure in us. And this is what we're going to talk about now. So there is going to be a judgment against all that displeases God and that cannot come before him because they have passed the line. The angels can't be redeemed. People can be redeemed as they repent and take the prescription from the doctor, which is the blood of Jesus Christ who died on the cross. He will forgive us all of our sins and we can be washed clean and put into the camp of the elect and the righteous. 
who we're going to read about right now. Blessed are ye, O saints and elect, for glorious is your lot or your situation. Right now, we're looking to move, and so we're looking at different um, houses and situations. And so we're going to be placed by God, because my husband and I, we, again, we prayed last night, and we gave him our lives, and we said, God, please direct our paths. We read um, Proverbs 4, verses 5 and 6, the Lord will do Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Give him glory, and he will direct your path which is what we are trusting. So we're going to end up somewhere. We're going to end up on a lot of ground somewhere, right? Well, glorious is our lot, that we're going to land on the earth, but also, guys, all that wine stored up, all the pain and processing that we did as we sought the Lord, and we were beat up by mankind, we still trusted God. We sought God more than we sought man. We were tried in tribulation. We were tested in the fire. And we kept going forward to God. These are the saints and elect that receive Jesus Christ as our Savior and walk with God. Because just like the bride, you can't do anything else when you're in love. When you are in love, you are consumed by that love. And when we love Jesus Christ that most awesome among all we worship and honor him and we seek him for our own deep heart our own deep need our rescue we seek god amen and he comes and abides in us those are the saints and elect glorious is your situation beloved the saint shall exist in the light of the sun and the elect in the light of everlasting life the days of whose life shall never terminate nor shall the days of the saints be numbered who seek for light. Where will I be in 10,500 years? Somewhere, right? Where will you be? You're certainly coming with, with me to heaven, obviously, through Christ Jesus. And we're blessed. And our, na our days are, are never numbered. Like they'll never end. We'll live forever and ever in paradise with God fulfilled to know our God and him to know us and to be with others that we love and others that we respect and commune with each other forever and, and have fellowship and do fun things in heaven. Amen? Because that's where we're going. Peace be. Hold on. The days of your life will never terminate, nor shall the days of the saints be numbered who seek for light and obtain righteousness through Jesus Christ with the Lord of spirits. Peace be to the saints with the Lord of the world. Amen. Lord, let it be so. You see, he has found favor with me, and I pushed through to do this message today. The first one didn't have sound because I'm still working on my microphone situation. But I hope you can hear me well and that the Lord is glorified. But I'm going to push through, and I'm going to honor my God. Peace be to the saints with the Lord for the wor of the world. Amen? Peace be to you. Peace be to the saints, O oh God, as I pray with you in your heart, Lord. Henceforward so shall the saints be told to seek in heaven the secrets of righteousness, which is what I tell you all the time. It's what he tells us he, in the Bible. He wants us to seek in heaven the secrets of righteousness, which is what the bride is going to do in Song of Solomon chapter 5. She seeks for her beloved. Once you have that love, you can't, it can't, you can't go back. All you can do is seek. And you go through the valley of the shadow of death. You fear no evil, for God is with you. You walk through the, the desert, leaning on your beloved. Well, now it's time for us to come out of the desert. And, be, and we're being told to seek in heaven the secrets of righteousness. So we're to seek above, according to scripture, the portion of faith. For the sun has it risen, for like the sun, the portion of faith has risen upon the earth. While darkness has passed away, there shall be light interminable, nor shall they enter upon the enumeration of time. At some point, things will shift and the eternal situation will become manifest. Well, God can, can abide eternally. He cannot abide pride marches eternally, right? He cannot abide the, all the darkness and all the ways people say, I didn't sin. I didn't do anything bad. Say that to his face because you did. 
And you can't lie before God. It's all manifest to him. He sees everything, right? There will be no, so there will come a time when it will just be how God wants it to be. And all that dishonored him will be previously destroyed. And will, the mouth of hell will open and eat them up, right? And we won't enter upon the enumeration of time. It will never end. So our lives today, we can live in eternity. Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. I came to give you eternal life, which means I can live how I'm going to be in 10,500 years. I can acknowledge that now and live my eternal life now as I sit here today and be who I'm going to be because I am an eternal being and I have pleased God. And so I'm created to to exist in his light and his presence fills me and he's welcome here and his presence fills you and he's welcome there. And that is how we can start living in the Garden of Eden. We can start living our eternal life today by seeking God. It's so simple. All he wanted, all he wanted was for us to love him and for him to love us and to have that communion as if you were the only one, beloved. He's that great, and that's how he is. And we won't enter upon the enumeration of time. It won't ever end. For darkness, isn't it cool to think about, listen, you know when you don't have to work the following day and you go to bed knowing that and there's a great peace there? How about in eternity when you, you always know it never ends? You always know it's not going to be bad. You always know. But we were given an opportunity in this life to go through things we had to process. He held it all up in barrels and let it ferment into great kingdom wine for us and for him. He eats of us, our sacrifices and our devotion. Nothing you went through was wasted. It was processing to bring us to this place where the enumeration of time will never be. There will never be that. It will just keep going forever and ever. But we had been given an opportunity to trust God while it was dark. And we will give thanks forever for that. Because we were he created within us an ability to stand and to keep seeking him, which honored him, brought him glory, and brought us honor in our eternal existence. Amen. If you think about Billy Graham or ministers that you love that have gone to glory, how they have affected and changed your life. Amen. Those people hold honor. You honor them for what they did. And I'll honor my grandma for what she did for me in my life. You see? And there's this honor there when we serve God. We become something before him. And then we are blessing. We, are, we bring him among mankind. And there's a blessing there that we are allowed to distribute. While we are still yet in our bodies, while the world is still yet dark. But there will come a time where that will be gone, but we will still exist within the honor God placed in our hearts and the honor that he has in his heart for us who have endured. There's a reality there. When your kid gets beside you and you've got a lot of work to do and they really take up weight and do something, that honors God and he loves that. And that, that kid will forever be honored. You see, we're going to live forever with the honor that we bring with us to heaven. And we want to bring God honor by humbling ourselves. We may not ever be great on the earth, but that doesn't ever matter because our greatness is not determined by humankind in their response to us. Our greatness is determined by God in our relationship with him that we take with us forever. Okay, for darkness shall be previously destroyed and light shall increase before the Lord of Spirits. Before the Lord of Spirits shall the light of uprightness increase forever. So the light of my uprightness will increase. So in five years, I will be more bright for God. And so will you. Whether this time has come within the next five years or not, we will still be bright. And the light of uprightness increases forever as we proceed on the path the narrow path of the Lord Jesus Christ. In those days my eyes beheld the secrets of the lightnings and the splendors and the judgment belonging to them. Amen. And he saw a lot of secrets of creation and that lightning brings fertility 
In that neat, lightning brings fertility to, to the earth. It's pretty cool. He saw that, the secrets. And Enoch was Noah's great-grandfather, who we're reading from, who saw the end. He saw the whole thing. God is amazing. He knew beforehand, shared it with his servant, and now we're reading it at the end. Amen. And I'm going to close with praying for you. God, I thank you for those who made it through this message, that you are glorified in our midst, that your word is brought forth, and that at some point we can expect the innumer the um, darkness to be previously destroyed. But until then, we want to dedicate our lives to serve you and seek after you like the bride in the Song of Solomon, chapter 5. We want to seek after you. We want to, we want to honor our process that you take us through because it will produce wine. The crushing produces the wine. And the oil of the olive, the crushing of the olive produces oil. The crushing of the grape produces wine. God created the whole thing sovereignly knowing that it might be difficult for his beloved. But we would give thanks forever because that difficulty has created us in, in being able to truly honor God. If it was easy, if God said, Behold, I give you your favorite donut. You shall eat it. And we ate it. Everybody would come to God. You know, everybody would walk the narrow path if it was just convenient and yummy. But sometimes it's inconvenient. And oftentimes it's painful. And the bitterness of life can really be harsh on us sometimes. Right? But we keep turning to God and it's wonderful. And he's creating within us his habitation. And we do meet resistance as the enemy tries to stop this from happening because he knows when we stand up before God, God will decide for us. That's why he wanted everybody to sin so that God would decide against them because the devil has come to kill, steal, and destroy. But God has come to give life and more abundant life. And that is going to win, in the end, the life of God. And even in all of your trials, the life of God will win in the end because you are honored to overcome as he overcame. And we will sit with him on his throne and he will come to the throne of his glory, which is our lives, be glorified in light upon us and we will lift up his name and he will do whatever he's going to do. That is the news. We don't need to be worried about the natural news, unless God asks you to pray for something. But this is the news. So whether we're at home in the body or dead, we're honoring God. Because when we're here, we're still given an opportunity to push through and to honor God in our lives. So that eternally, we, trans we take that with us. It's translated to our eternal state in the ways that we honor God on the earth. And we provide for Him. He eats of our lives and enjoys us, and we enjoy Him. And that's the simplicity of the gospel. God wants to enjoy you. He wants you to enjoy Him. So let's go about that. And whether, he, whether the days come, what we just described, Enoch described, and the darkness is previously destroyed, and we stand before God in the light of the sun that is described in the book of Revelation, the city of our God, and Jesus is the light thereof. And it's a beautiful description of our eternal life with God. Whether he brings that today, tomorrow, or the next day, or in 10 years, 5 years, I don't know. But I do know that I want you and I to make the most of our lives and go through the processes with him. And to bring him glory. And let our consciousness flow. And let him direct that flow instead of us trying to direct that flow, and to get him to bless what we're doing. We're going to humble ourselves and allow him to create within us that glorious kingdom wine that he enjoys as we trust in him because he loves to comfort us when we go through things, right? And so whether we're dead or alive or this happen, this happens in our lifetime or not, we are given an opportunity to sow into your eternal existence by trusting God and being faithful to Him. Amen? And thank you so much for listening. I pray, God, that you would bless everyone who listened extremely beyond what I could ask, think, or imagine, every single one eternally for listening to this message. 
that you would bless them specifically, each one, in the name of Jesus, whatever they need. That you would move upon them and cause them to be lighter and less burdened and more at peace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. And that you will destroy darkness from before your face. In the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching.